Welcome to episode 259 of Angela Watson's Truth For Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak encouragement into the hearts of educators and get you informed and energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm sharing how you can decide in advance how much you're willing to work in each week ahead and allocate those hours in a productive way. Visit truthforteachers.com to get an easy to read, easy to share version of this podcast episode. I have been able to learn so much about productivity. I feel that my workload is more manageable. I was actually able to move from making my copies on a day-to-day basis to having things for the entire next week ahead of time, sometimes even two weeks out. Knowing what boundaries I can set and also knowing when it's okay to work and when it's okay not to work and just take that time for me. If you want support with setting and sticking to a target number, remember that the 40-hour teacher workweek Fast Track program is open to new members all year long. Just go to 40htw.com to learn more. We're kicking off season 16 of the podcast today, and I'll be sharing an excerpt from the 40-hour teacher workweek program about setting a target number of hours. I am actually recovering from COVID at the moment. This was my first time getting it. I managed to go two and a half years without, but uh, couldn't seem to avoid it this summer. So as you probably hear, my voice still doesn't sound great and my throat gets sore and scratchy when I talk a lot. So I pushed the start of the podcast season back for two weeks to allow more time for healing. And though I am feeling a bit better, I still don't sound totally normal and I want to rest my vocal cords. Fortunately, I have an audio version of this topic already done for 40-hour members, and next week's episode is an interview, which I already conducted earlier in the summer, so that is helping me ease into this season. Hopefully, by the time I need to record September's episodes, I'll be ready to rock. So let's get into today's topic. As we head into the school year, I want you to begin thinking about a sustainable workload. During your first six weeks or so of the new school year, you will probably be putting in longer hours just as you're getting organized, acclimatized, and just settle into the shape of your work this year. But I don't want you to just work until everything is done because it's never all going to be done. And that means you're always either going to be working or feel like you should be working. So instead, I'm going to teach you a principle that I share in the 40-hour teacher workweek programs that I run. Um, And I teach this to not only teachers, but also instructional coaches and school leaders. It's the target number planner. You can create a schedule in which you determine at the start of each week how much time you're willing to spend on school stuff and how you're going to allocate your hours. So no more showing up at school and staying until all the work is done. You're going to take control of your schedule and fit work into your life instead of life into your work. You might be thinking, well, wait, what if I don't want to know how many hours I'm working? Some club members in our full year program are really resistant to the idea of choosing how many hours to work. So if you're feeling that way, you're in good company. These members have joined the club because they want to work smarter, not harder, and they don't really care about cutting down their work hours. They just want to do the best job possible in a more efficient way. But what these teachers discover over time, and what I'm telling you here up front and fast track so that you don't have to figure this out the hard way, is that bringing your awareness to how much of your life you're devoting to work is one of the best catalysts for creating change. I can't tell you how many club members have said, when I started writing down how much I was working, I truly could not believe it. I knew I worked a lot, but I had no idea just how much. Seeing the hours right there in black and white was just the boost that many teachers have needed to get serious about making lifestyle changes and being more intentional with how they use their time. You can't change what you don't measure. By writing it down, you immediately see unhealthy and unbalanced patterns. The very thing that makes tracking so scary is exactly what makes it so worthwhile. Recording your work hours has many benefits. It will help you identify where you're wasting time and sabotaging your own success. It'll help you see exactly what you're saying yes to and therefore why you have to say no to so many other things. 
And you'll be more motivated to make better decisions about your time because you know that you're going to have to write everything down. All you really need to do is be open to the idea of choosing and tracking how much you work. That's the foundation of being able to set reasonable boundaries on your time and having a sustainable work schedule. I'm going to show you how to select a target number of hours to work that is realistic for you and how to adjust it each week according to your workload and the demands in your personal life. Don't shy away from creating a target number of hours because you're afraid you won't be able to meet your goal or you're afraid it'll be too much trouble to track it. The target number that you choose will be realistic and adjustable. It is not intended to make you feel guilty for not meeting it. And you can even change your number midweek as things come up. The target number is just that. It's a target. It's a goal to work toward. So here's how I chose my target number of hours. When my students' hours were 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., my contractual hours were 7.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. So that's a half an hour before the instructional day and a half hour after. It was 7.5 hours a day for teachers and 6.5 hours for students. The kids had a 30-minute lunch break and 30 minutes for special classes like art and music every single day. So my instructional time was usually around five and a half hours, assuming that I'd still actually got this, my planning time during those special classes and it wasn't canceled. So here's the math that I did. My contractual hours were 37 and a half hours per week. So it was a seven and a half hour day times five days a week. 37 and a half hours. Instructional time was five and a half hours a day times five days a week is 27 and a half hours. So that meant that I had a 10 hour difference there. That's 10 hours for me to get teaching tasks done while still quote on the clock. So I decided to make a concrete plan for using those 10 paid hours wisely because a lot of it was being eaten up by meetings, laminator and copier malfunctions, impromptu conferences with parents, and so on. You know how it goes. So I used the club's list-making system to help me ensure that I had determined my main thing and my priorities for the day, and I scheduled those priorities into appropriate time slots. We're going to go into that more next week, so just kind of file that away for future reference. My productivity strategies in the list-making system made me feel confident that I was using my time wisely and I was working as efficiently as I could during my 37.5-hour week. For me, that particular school year, it was reasonable to add about two and a half hours for working before and after school on my own time, for a total of around 40 hours per week. Now, there were other years, particularly when I was new to the school, or new to the grade level, or we had a new curriculum or set of standards. In those years, my target number was higher than 40 hours a week. And of course, there were times of year when 40 hours was impossible, like during back to school time or parent conference week. The great thing about the target number is that it is adjustable. I chose what made sense for me and my teaching context in any given week. In a typical five-day week, 40 to 45 hours a week was a realistic target for me. Now, here's how I used my target number to design a sustainable work schedule. Since my contractual hours were 7.30 to 3, and my students' hours were 8 to 2.30, I had a half an hour before and after school as a prep or planning time. I knew I needed to get a little bit more time before school to get ready for the day. A full hour would really be ideal, especially since I am not a morning person by nature and I need time to fully wake up before a couple dozen rambunctious eight-year-olds come bustling through the door. I also knew I would be exhausted after school and I would want to leave as soon as possible. Usually when I stayed late, I would end up talking to my colleagues or doing stuff online because it's the only chance I've had to sit down all day. And by the time all that's done, it's nearly four o'clock. I've been in the classroom for an hour longer than needed without actually getting anything accomplished that could have been done at home. So staying late just isn't the best use of time for me personally. For those reasons, I decided I wanted to arrive at school at 7 a.m. to give myself a full hour before school without the kids. And I wanted to leave by 3 p.m., which meant I had a half an hour after the kids were dismissed to get my work done. That's 90 minutes of prep time before and after school combined, plus about 30 minutes for lunch and 30 minutes of planning time during most school days. 
theoretically, and stick with me here because I know that this is all just in an ideal situation. Theoretically, that's around three hours a day to get my stuff done on the days when I didn't have meetings. Now, of course, all of those three hours weren't kid-free time. Sometimes students would come in the classroom a few minutes before the first bell, or my planning period would be canceled, and dismissal could sometimes eat into 20 minutes at the end of my day. But I wasn't responsible for instruction during those three hours. So not only did I plan to get my work done, even if students were in the room, I planned routines that put them to work as my helpers, so I got even more accomplished than I would have on my own. We're going to talk more in week three about automating and delegating routine tasks to students so that the classroom is self-running. I figured if I worked efficiently and intentionally, the hours of seven to three would be manageable and would be the best way to structure my 40 hours. So a question that comes up a lot when I talk about these target number principles is whether or not the target number should include all work-related tasks. And here's what I have to say about that. Teaching is truly a passion of mine. I enjoy finding and sharing ideas online. I love creating elaborate activities and curriculum materials instead of using what the school provides or a simple version that I could create more quickly. I love to decorate. I love to organize the classroom and making things exactly the way that I want them. I didn't count those tasks as part of my target 40 hours because they weren't required to the extent that I did them. And I didn't want to limit the time that I spent on them. Those things are the creative side of teaching that I gladly pursue. It's like a hobby. So if you love spending hours making things for your classroom from scratch like I did, you might not want to count those tasks in your target number. To do so might feel restrictive. It might take away some of the enjoyment that you get from being a teacher. So instead, focus on setting boundaries around how much time you allow for mandatory tasks, which will then free you up to do the fun, creative stuff as often as you'd like. For example, I did not enjoy spending my free time grading papers. So that was a task that I included in my target number of hours. I was only willing to spend a small portion of my unpaid time in the evenings on assessment. So I created a schedule and boundaries for that. Once the time that I had dedicated for grading and all the work work was over, I was then free to choose how to spend the rest of my evening. If I wanted to go on Pinterest and find cool teaching ideas for an hour, I could do that, knowing that that was hobby work. It was something I was doing just for fun because I wanted to. Or I might realize that I would be better rested the next day if I went for a walk and then just relaxed for the rest of the evening. Similarly, I allocated a reasonable amount of hours at the beginning of the school year to setting up my classroom, so I planned for a few 12-hour days. I got all the primary work-work tasks done during that time so that the classroom was technically ready for students. Then, and only then, did I decide how much hobby work that I wanted to do in terms of decorating and all the other little touches that were fun for me, but not required and definitely not necessary. In this way, the target number of hours that you work is just a tool for intentionality. A lot of the work we do as educators is not technically needed or required. When you decide in advance how much time you're willing to allocate to the work work, which is absolutely necessary, you'll have more freedom to do the hobby work and anything else that you'd like to use your time for. So let's talk now about how you can pick your target number of hours. Most teachers who are working 55 to 60 hours or even more a week will not be able to get to 40 hours right away, and maybe not even ever, depending on your teaching context. So it's important that you pick a personal target number to work toward. The goal is not to work a 40-hour week, despite the name of my 40-hour teacher workweek program. I don't think the choose your own target number, which is realistic for your teaching context and adjusted each week club, has quite the same ring to it. I chose the number 40 for the title because that's aligned with most teaching contracts. You are likely not being paid to work more than 40 hours a week. And therefore, you should be intentional about maximizing what you get done during the hours for which you're getting paid and being very mindful about how much you work for free. And yes, technically, teaching is a salaried position. 
but you have clearly defined hours that you are required to work. And your contract doesn't obligate you to work most evenings and weekends. So my goal is to help you do the vast majority of your tasks well during your required hours. So what should your target number be? My advice is to avoid choosing your target number by thinking about how many hours you need in order to get all your work done. You could probably work 100 hours and still have stuff left on your to-do list. Teaching is like parenting. It's a never-ending job, and there's always something more you could be doing. Ask yourself, how much more time would I need in a day to make my life feel less stressful and busy? Not stress-free, of course, but less stressful. Start small. Would one extra hour a day make a small difference in the amount of rushing that you have to do after school to get errands done? Or give you some time to play outside with your own kids in the evenings? If one extra hour a day would help your stress level, estimate how many hours per week you're working on average right now, and then subtract five from it. So that's one hour per workday. This is your baseline target number. If that number seems impossible or scary, Subtract three hours instead of five from your current total. You can lower your target number slowly over time as you establish more productive work habits and as you learn new strategies through Fast Track. Remember, you are not counting hobby work. If you are currently working around 60 hours a week, but you're spending 15 minutes each morning tracing adorable script font letters onto your whiteboard for a cute display, and then 15 minutes checking personal email and social media during your planning period, and then 30 minutes every afternoon chatting in a colleague's room, well, you can subtract just those three things on a daily basis, and you're technically working one less hour a day, or only 55 hours a week instead of 60. This doesn't mean that you have to stop doing any of those things. We're just not going to call them work anymore and bemoan the impossible to reduce 60-hour weeks. Right now is the time to get real about how many hours you actually need in order to get the job done. Then you can use the rest of your time however you would like, for fun school stuff or for personal stuff. So take whatever number of hours you're typically working each week, and you can determine that by just observing how many hours you're working this week and kind of get an estimate. And then subtract three to five from it, depending on how bold you want to be. This is the baseline that you will work with to choose your target number each week. Let's talk now about how to be flexible and adjust your target number each week. I don't want your target number to be a source of stress. Most people feel anxious or disappointed in themselves when they don't meet their goals. So when, not if, but when you work more than your target number of hours, you might feel discouraged. And if too many weeks pass without you meeting your goal, you might feel like giving up and start slipping back into old, unproductive habits. I want to help you have a plan to avoid that. You can choose your target number of hours on a week-by-week basis. So sit down on the weekend, I like Sunday nights for this, and look at the obligations you have for work and your personal life. And then create a schedule that meets those needs. If progress reports are due tomorrow and the science fair is on Friday, then adjust your target number of work hours upward for the week. If your daughter's birthday party is on Saturday, then adjust the target number of work hours downward. And don't feel one bit guilty about it. You can always plan to stay late at work the next week to catch up if needed. Though you won't be able to anticipate all the demands that will come at you throughout the week, you should be able to set an estimate for how much time you can realistically devote to work over the next couple of days. You can even give yourself permission to revise your target number midweek if emergencies crop up. Always set yourself up to be successful, even if you have to alter your expectations. This is about intentionality and mindfulness with your time. It's not about keeping a perfectly planned schedule. Here's where the real magic of the target number comes in allocating your target number of hours throughout the week. When you are choosing your target number for the week, you are looking at your calendar or your planner or your to-do list, whatever kind of system you use, and you're noticing what extra obligations and appointments, errands, social events, all those types of things are coming up at school and in your personal life. 
So when you choose your target number of hours for the coming week, you will also choose your schedule and how you want to allocate those work hours. This way, you're not heading into school on Monday morning without a plan and using up all your allotted work hours before the week is over. You're going to decide in advance when you want to work and for how long. It's much less tiring to do schoolwork on your own time when you have clear boundaries around how much of your personal life you're willing to sacrifice. It is depressing to sit down with a huge stack of papers to grade every Sunday night when you have no idea how long it's going to take you to get through them. But if you know that you have carved two hours out of your weekend schedule to disappear into a quiet room of your house or the local coffee shop or library and have focused, undistracted grading time, that goal feels a lot more doable. You'll also work faster and with more focus. The boundaries on your time create a sense of urgency. You won't be as tempted to waste time checking social media or flipping through TV channels. You know you have a short period of time to be productive, and then you can enjoy the rest of your day. Here are some examples of ways that 40-hour workweek members have allocated their work hours. Go to school two hours early every day, and then leave when the students leave in the afternoon, taking no work home. You can work nine hours on Monday and Wednesday and eight hours on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. You can stay one hour late every day and work at home from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. three days a week. You might work only your contractual hours from Monday to Friday and then work at home from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday. You might arrive an hour early every weekday morning and then stay three hours late on Friday to prepare for the coming week. Or maybe you'll work for three hours every Monday evening to prepare for the week ahead and stay just one hour late from Tuesday to Friday. Give yourself the freedom to choose and follow a schedule that works for your life each week. Deciding in advance how to allocate your hours gives you a sense of control over how your time is used and it ensures that the most important tasks get done. Another option with choosing your target number is to begin by writing down the hours that you plan to work each day this week, and then total them up to find the target number. So if you know that you can stay two hours late on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and spend three hours Sunday on school stuff, write that in your planner for each day. Monday work hours, 7 to 5. Tuesday work hour, 7 to 3, and so on. And then you can total that up to see your target number for the week. If the schedule doesn't work, adjust it. Say to yourself, well, I thought I'd only have to stay two hours late each afternoon this week, but finalizing my grade book before report cards is taking more time than I thought. It's Wednesday now, and I'm going to adjust my target number by three, so I can stay an extra hour each afternoon for the rest of the week. That's the amount of time I can realistically allot to getting this done. So I'll give myself the extra three hours, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to finish during that time. Resist the urge to write off an entire day or week because you've wasted too much time or worked too much or you feel like you've gotten too far out of balance. Choose in that moment when you feel like giving up to just adjust your target number and your allocation of work hours for the remainder of the week. Keep moving forward. It's perfectly fine to have lots of weeks when you're working way more than you intended, especially when you're just getting started with this process. Over time, you'll get better at choosing a realistic target number and allocating your work hours in a way that fits your lifestyle. As you pay more attention to how long the work work actually takes, it will become easier to make accurate estimates and stick to the schedule you created. If you want support with setting and sticking to a target number, remember that the 40-hour Teacher Workweek Fast Track program is open to new members all year long. Just go to 40htw.com to learn more. Your takeaway truth for the week ahead is this. Choosing a target number of hours to work is not about perfection. It's about intentionality. You're simply deciding in advance how many hours you'd like to allocate to work and being mindful of how your time is passing instead of just working endless hours until everything's done. This is the start of a mindset shift more than anything else as you practice fitting work into your life instead of life into your work. You can do this. And remember, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it.